So you want to play college football? Well, let's talk about that. What's going on YouTube? Mr. Football here today. Today I'm going to talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for a little bit here on the channel. Uh, I have a lot of people come on and ask about, you know, you know, how do they go about playing uh, football in college and so forth, like, you know, pretty much after high school. Um, and, and talk about, you know, how you get there, what are the steps to, you know, get you from high school to college and get you enrolled uh, and get you playing football because obviously if you uh, want to play college football there's you know obviously there's reasons why you may want to play uh, whether you intend on becoming a professional athlete or you know playing for just the sole fun of it I think there's many things that you need to consider about playing college football I played at a division two school back uh, eight nine years ago and there really hasn't been that much radical change in that amount of time um, but what I want to do is talk about the different divisions of football because each one in college, Division One, Division Two, and Division Three, all have differences. Um, and there's there's essentially I wouldn't say there's a college football for everybody, but you've really got to consider where you fit into this. Um, we're going to do many videos uh, talking about this topic, uh, just related to college football, not just you know specifically on the divisions. This is kind of the divisions video where we go through each division, talk about the differences, and maybe try to find where you fit into this picture. Um, there are different requirements at each level. Um, ultimately, you know, you have to be in good standard academically to be considered to even be eligible to play NCAA anything. So that's kind of the first thing, but we'll talk about, you know, GPAs and stuff in another video. In today's video, I just wanted to talk about the different divisions, um, specifically just for football. Uh, your basketball sports, uh, your basketball divisions are set up just a little bit different, um, but for the most part, football is always kind of given a different classification as far as Division One compared to Division Two. Um, the main thing we'll start with Division One. Um, division One is pretty much what everybody thinks about. Uh, in college. I mean, it's pretty much what you see. Um, you know, major college football, uh, this is what's what used to be known, and it's still known as the bowl, football bowl subdivision. Um, and so that's where teams are essentially playing for bowl games. And I know now the playoff system that's been in place for uh, several years now obviously has changed that a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, like, it's classified by the bowl system. Um, at the given time, there are 130 members of the essentially Division I level as far as football. When you think major college football, uh, you know, think of, you know, your favorite team. and It's more than likely a Division I team. Um, and, and one thing that I'll say about the divisions of football, they're all broken down by how many sports that a school can offer. And so if a, you know, a... A college just can't rise out of the ground and say they're only going to play football and be eligible in the NCAA. That's not how it works. And so the NCAA requires them to have so many sports uh, in order to be in a certain division. Even though like, they may be the greatest football school in the entire world, um, and that's all they do, that still doesn't cut it by the NCAA standards. So I, it's somewhere between 14 and 18 sports offered, uh, and that's between men and women. Um, whether they have, you know, nine uh, women's sports and eight men's sports, that does, sometimes you see that where uh, because of Title IX, you'll see that there will be more women's sports than men's in some way. Uh, but that's all about Title IX, and I can talk about Title IX in a later video, but that doesn't really apply to today. Um, but the thing with Division I is they pretty much schedule all Division I schools. Now, the, as far as like FBS schools go, whether you think from all the way up to Alabama, uh, Clemson, Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, all these different big major schools, um, you know, they obviously they play in conferences. Uh, and, the con and the conferences have a lot more, uh, in, and there's, there's a whole lot of money into that aspect. The thing about getting to that level 
is you've got to be pretty elite talent to get a scholarship. And it's been said that somewhere between, you know, it's less than 1% will go on to play major college football. Uh, and that's a very small number of people that actually get to go and play at that level. And so within that, you know, the scholarships that teams are able to offer, like one team can only have so many scholarship players. And I want to say that the limit uh, as far as like when they do a signing class, I want to say it's around 25. And I may correct myself if I'm wrong uh, later on in editing. But it's it's usually about 25 scholarships is where, you know, if a team, but that, that's the thing, it's more of a balancing thing. If a school has a ton of money, and can you know offer scholarships for a hundred players? You know, it's not really fair to another school that you know can't field that. And so it's all about creating equal fairness. Um, when you talk about the division, as far as Division One, uh, you know they're they're going to be offering, and and there's a lot of myths behind full ride scholarships, partial scholarships, and I think that's that might get discussed in this video. But what I'll say about it is. If you go to, let's just say Notre Dame, all right, we'll just use that as an example. Well, Notre Dame is a private school. Private schools cost more than public schools just by based on, you know, what they offer. And so, like, your tuition there is going to be pretty high. If you're lucky enough to get a scholarship to play football at Notre Dame, I mean, you're essentially playing at Notre Dame for Notre Dame for what it is and getting to play football there. Um, and you're going to get, you know, compensated for your athletic ability. That's essentially what it is. Um, you know, whereas when you go to smaller schools, um, you may not receive a full scholarship. It just depends on what level of football um, you get into. But I would say for any Division One, you know, they're going to offer an athletic scholarship. That athletic scholarship may not cover every single thing. That is a myth that the athletic scholarship is essentially a full ride. That's not necessarily the case in some ways. Um, the other side of Division One is what is just referred to as the football championship uh, subdivision, the FCS level. It's still Division One, but they determine a national champion based on a true playoff system. I think of either 16 teams. I could be wrong. I've, it's been a while since I've really followed that. But they, you know, they don't have bowls. They don't have bowl games in a sense. I mean, they have a true playoff system. Um, and then you have several Division One schools that don't offer football. And so it's, I think, according to a book I was reading, um, it was nine. There's a total of 98 members that, that don't play football. And so football plays a pretty big role as far as uh, you know scholarships for that sport. I mean, you have to kind of get it that way. Um, but, you know, they have a, as far as financial aid goes, and when I say financial aid, I'm talking about scholarships. And so, you know, it's going to be extremely hard for a, just a average player in high school to get, I mean, it's, it's almost like it's not going to happen. So you really need to consider, you know, what level you're going to play in, um, because that is truly the hardest area to go. I mean, sure, would I have loved to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks? Of course. I didn't have a chance in heck to you know, play there. That's just not going to happen, okay? Um, division, let's go to Division Two, And I, I guess I will say about the FCS level is they still offer athletic scholarships, um, but you never know. I, I don't know exacts on how many they can offer, and it's not truly guaranteed that it could be a full ride, okay? Let's talk about Division Two. This is the level that I know the most about. Like I said, what classifies a Division Two school? Basically, how many teams and sports that they can field, uh, and that's not including football. It's everything, men's and women's sports together. Um, Division two schools, uh, there's about 300, there's a little over 300 total Division two schools. Um, and as far as what they do, they have to at least offer 10 sports, at least five for men, five for women. Uh, some do six and four. Like the school that I was at, they did uh, six women's sports, four men's sports. They did uh, golf, football, basketball, baseball for men. And I think they added cross country and uh, tennis for women. And so that was just based on uh, what they offer. Okay. As far as that goes, um, as far as financial aid, 
Okay, Division II schools, they can offer a minimum amount of financial aid, but they cannot exceed uh, an established number, whatever that established maximum number of scholarships they can offer. Um, you know, they can only offer so much, like I said. Uh, the, the difference between Division I and Division II, um, there's a lot of differences. It's prob You're probably not going to be um, getting as much financial aid. Uh, you will still see athletic scholarships, but if you want your school entirely paid for, it's probably going to have to come from the academic side as well. So, you know, a Division II scholarship may just cover the cost that just puts you in the classroom. Okay, because obviously you've got to go to class in college, uh, you know, to be eligible to play football anyway. So the thing is, is like, that's not going to cover where you're going to live. That's not going to, that may not cover. It depends. Uh, it depends what the school can offer. Okay. But, you know, that's something that you have to consider when you look at this level. It is not as competitive as Division One. I'll just say that. Um, I mean, it's competitive. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, people are playing for the playoffs. People, I mean, it's a it's a real deal. People are playing for conference championships. But, like, when I played, it was more fun for me. Like, I wasn't, you know, trying to get noticed by NFL scouts. I mean, it didn't really matter to me. I was just, I just wanted to play more football after college, or excuse me, after high school. So, that's what I did. I just had a desire to play. I wanted to try it, and I did. I walked on. I didn't get a scholarship to play. And so most guys at the Division II level, uh, usually they're the best guy at their high school. And I would say, like, whoever the – if you're the best guy in your in your high school, the best football player, you probably have a good shot at playing Division II football. Um, you know, but that's not saying that everybody needs to play, okay? Um, so – they can, you know, as far as financial aid goes, like you may not get all of your school paid for, so your academics are going to have to come into play as well. Um, and then obviously, like I said, Division Two obviously plays for a national championship uh, via a playoff system. Uh, the final thing that I want to talk about was Division Three. Division Three compared to Division One, completely different. Okay, um, Division Three schools are, I would say are more for just the love of the game um, and division three schools do not offer athletic scholarships and so in a sense division three schools are just meant for fun and so you just play for the love of the game like i think if i would have had an opportunity to find a division three school around me i would have enjoyed just playing for the love of the game and didn't have to compete for scholarships because i mean in a sense you can walk on and be a practice dummy but like they're not going to offer a scholarship to you unless you know you can contribute to the football team, you know, and so forth. So you got to look at it from that standpoint. You know, um, I, I've at least seen it where you know Division three schools have problems fielding teams. They're not going to be 120, you know, players on a team. It might be you know 70, something like that. But that's not going to be, um, you know, it, it's for the love of the game. Like it's not. I think. Personally, I think Division Three would be great. And I've known a lot of people that's played at that level, and it's just fun. Um, the thing that's going to get you to Division Three is if you can't afford the school to go to Division Three, like you're going to have to be great academically. Like your academics are going to have to carry you to that school. It's not saying that like you can't get a scholarship at a Division Three school. Like if you have great grades and can apply to that school and get in. Um, you know, that's awesome. Like, you can play football on the side, and, you know, it can it can be fun. Uh, and that's that's what Division Three is all about. It's, it's fun. And so think about it from the standpoint of, you know, each level. Division One is obviously the most highly competitive, all right? I mean, it, it's crazy how competitive that that level of football has gotten just in the past 20 years. Um, and then Division Two, II, Division Three, they're pretty much comparable. Uh, as far as size and, you know, amount of players and so forth. And so there's just not many players that are going to receive athletic scholarships. Like, it's just it's such a low percent. I mean, a lot of people play football, but not everybody gets a scholarship. Uh, you've got to be good enough. And, and we're going to talk about those kind of things in a later video. Um, but personally, I, if... If I had to choose one to go to just for the love of the game, I would choose a Division three school. Uh, you know, just just to have, you know, it's just more about fun. Like, it's not really about 
the competition for me. Even though they, they're still competitive, they still play in conferences, they still play for national championships. So, you know, you got to consider where you fall into this. Now, if you notice, we didn't talk about junior college. That's a whole other monster in itself, and that's something that we can talk about in a later video. There is another, you know, division of football that's referred to as NAIA, um, which is very comparable to the Division Three level. As far as it's just it's separated from the NCAA, um, so there are other options out there in order to play football. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I tried to run some numbers as far as like getting you guys uh, some things to know about uh, the different levels of football. Um, I've been I'm in my master's classes right now, and I've been kind of studying about college sports and so forth. And so this was kind of on my mind. I know I have a lot of people that I talk to, especially in our live streams, uh, talk about you know college football, like people that you know think they want to try Division One. I. Um, I think it's just worth noting that you should try to find somewhere where you fit. Try to find colleges that you want to go to that play in that uh, you know division of football, and just enjoy it. I mean, it's not a you know it's not something where you have to go to college to play football. I mean. There's also other things that you need to do. So I hope that that was uh, helpful to you guys. I just want to go ahead and uh, go through and talk about some final things. Um, if you got any more questions on any of these topics, we can open that up in the comment section down below. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope it was informative. If there's anything else I need to add, y'all have questions, like we can make videos out of this stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot more to be discussed rather than just talking about the divisions of football. So... Uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Uh, I want to talk about our social media links. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Football Coach. That's M R F B Coach on Twitter. Uh, on Instagram, you can find my Instagram down below, Mr. Football Coach. You can search for it. Um, and then we all have also got Patreon if you want to support the channel. We've got uh, Patreon. We can essentially, uh, there's a many different, many different tiers. Uh, if you want to support the channel in that way, you don't have to, but that's something that you can do. Um, and then we also have Discord. Plenty of people talk in Discord. We can talk college football in there. Uh, we do that sometimes. Uh, but anyway, just want to say thank you guys for watching this video. We will see you next time. Mr. Football out.